Hey everybody, welcome back to Baking with Rosal Sourdough. This is Mike, and today I'm going to be going over one of my Instagram story highlights on Detroit-style pizza. It's going to be a recipe for how to make Detroit-style pizza dough, and then how to bake it in an Uni Pro. So the story highlight is available on my Instagram, at Rose Hill Sourdough. So this recipe is for an 8x10 Detroit-style pizza. Feel free to scale up or down the recipe as needed for the size pan you're using. We're going to start with 200 grams of warm water. And to that, we're gonna add eight grams of salt, eight grams of olive oil, and 40 grams of culture. And we're just gonna stir that up till it's all broken up and the water starts to look milky. And to that, we're gonna add 250 grams of bread flour. We're just gonna mix that up into a ball. No need to try to knead the dough or anything at this point. We're just trying to mix in all that flour. We're just trying to get all those ingredients mixed together well. And you'll know you're ready when there's no more dry flour left in the bottom of the bowl. So we're gonna go ahead and cover that up with a wet towel or lid and let that sit for an hour. And then we're gonna come back with lightly wet hands and do our first stretch and fold. Do our first fold on this dough. This is going to be a simple stretch and fold, just working away around the dough, pinching an edge, pulling it up, folding it over the top, and letting go over the center. We're gonna do that all the way around the dough, forming that smooth side and seam side of our dough. Once the ball starts to form, we're just gonna flip this dough over so that the seam side is down. So I do that by pinching and lifting the dough up out of the bowl and then folding it back onto itself and turning and doing that again. That's all we're looking for right here. So we're gonna cover it for an hour, let it rest. After an hour, we're gonna come back and we're gonna do a coil fold on this dough, just about four to six times, just to start forming a dough ball. If the dough's feeling nice and you're able to pick it up, that's fine, you can do that at this point. All we're looking to do is form a ball with a smooth top by tucking the edges up under the dough and smoothing out the top of that bowl. Again, I'm using wet hands to do this. Put it back in the bowl, seam side down, cover the wet towel, come back in an hour. Then we're gonna do another set of coil folds. What we're gonna do is gently lift the dough and let an edge fall on itself and then drop the dough back down onto that edge. Do it again for the other side, turn it, and do that one more time. Now we're gonna cover that up and let that sit again while we get our eight by 10 Detroit style pizza pan all oiled up. So that my pan's ready, I'm gonna do one last coil fold on this dough. I'm gonna set it down into the pan. I'm gonna cover it and let it rest. So at this point, if you're wanting to make pizza today, you've used warm water in your dough, you're gonna let this sit for three hours to do its final proof before you move on to the next step. Alternatively, the method I like to use is to do an overnight ferment, especially when I'm doing focaccia and bake this in the morning. Or if you're doing tort style pizza in the morning, just go ahead and pop that pizza into the fridge and take it out three hours before you're ready to make pizza. All right, so now that it's been three hours, we're gonna go ahead and prep our Uni Pro for making our Detroit style pizza. You can also make this in your home oven, just get your home oven as hot as it can go. Otherwise, here's how you prep an Uni Pro for baking a Detroit style pizza. You wanna make sure that your ceiling vent inside your Uni Pro is closed. This is gonna trap all that hot air in the oven and help with baking. We'll start by building a fire. I like to use hardwood kindling in this recipe to make sure my oven's nice and hot. And we're gonna wanna get this oven really hot. And 15 minutes in, we're already sitting at 300 Celsius, which is just south of 600 degrees Fahrenheit. At this point, I'm gonna add some nice hardwood charcoal to maintain that level of heat. I'm also gonna close my chimney baffle halfway to about 45 degrees. At this point, I'm gonna prep my dough. I'm just gonna simply oil the top of it and use wet hands to dimple the dough. And the dimpling is going to make sure that this dough cooks really evenly and doesn't puff up. It cooks nice and flat. Make sure you're pressing all the way to the bottom on your dimpling. Now I'm just gonna add some toppings. Traditional Detroit style pizza used cube brick cheese. Uh, I find a good substitute for that is Monterey Jack or a very mild cheddar. Make sure that you get a cheese all the way in the corners so it has that traditional cheesy crunchy corner of a Detroit style pizza. Other ingredients I like to add freshly minced garlic, shredded mozzarella cheese, I love putting pepperoncinis on this style pizza or you can go with the traditional Detroit style which is shredded mozzarella, some pepperoni, and remember put your red sauce on top. I'm gonna go out back out to my oven. My oven's sitting right between 250 and 300 C which is perfect. I'm gonna close that chimney baffle almost all the way I'm gonna pop the pizza in and I'm gonna set a timer for 10 minutes. I'm also gonna put on just one single piece of hardwood kindling, big chunky piece, so I get some extra heat and a little bit of smoke. After the 10 minutes, I'm gonna spin the pizza, put it back at the front of the oven, set a timer for six minutes, and I'm gonna push it all the way to the back of the oven, set a two minute timer, and after the timer's gone off, I'm gonna spin it and set another two minute timer. I'm gonna pull it out of the oven and this is what it looks and sounds like. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. If you'd like to see any more of my recipes or tips and tricks, please follow me on Instagram at Rosa Sourdough, and I hope to see you back here again soon.